Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. Today I want to show you the basics to walking foot style quilting, how this method works, the tools and supplies that I use on my machine whenever I quilt with my walking foot, the settings, all that kind of good stuff. And I also want to teach you how to quilt a super simple design called straight lines. So let's jump on the machine and start quilting together. So let's get started by attaching our walking foot to the machine. This foot needs to attach in a special way so that this arm moves up and down with the needle bar so that way these feed dogs here on the bottom of the foot, you see that moving? So that way it moves in time with the needle going up and down on the machine. So what I'm gonna do is slide this in sideways and lift that little arm basically and kind of fit it in. I'm going to drop my needle down so that way you can see it. You can see how that um, little arm is latched on and surrounding my needle bar right here. And on the Bernina I just have to pull down a little hook and that holds the foot in place. If you had screws in the side of your foot just screw it in nice and tight and that way it's locked in place. You want to be able to see whenever you drop your foot that little arm going up and down just like that on your machine so that way it's moving in time with your needle. So now let's talk about some of the tools I use for walking foot quilting. I always wear gloves whenever I quilt. It's my preferred method of getting a grip on the quilt and being able to control where it goes. My dad likes quilting grips. They're an alternative. They put less pressure on your fingertips. So you might wanna check out those too. Here on the machine, I have a queen size Supreme slider. This is a grippy Teflon sheet that the pink side grips the tabletop slightly. The off-white side is really slippery and that helps the quilt to be able to glide and slide through the machine. Now, because we are using the feed dogs and the walking foot can put a lot of pressure downward, we do not put the slider over the feed dog. See how I positioned it here so that it's to the side of the foot, it's completely off the feed dogs. And that way it can help our quilt move without getting chewed up. If you're not used to using this tool, please tape down the corners because and it can, over time, kind of stop being grippy because of lint building up on the back and it can flip over and yes, you can end up stitching through it. Happened to me once, it's not a lot of fun, so don't do that. So as far as stitch length goes, that's the next thing to talk about. I set my stitch length usually for walking foot quilting to 1.5 millimeters. It's my favorite stitch length. However, I am quilting with some fluffy minky fabric on the back of this square. I wanted to have some fun with a really soft quilt. When I'm uh, done with all of these squares, I'm gonna put it together and make a really nice soft quilt. So the minky changes things. And I find that I have to bump my stitch length up to 2.5 millimeters in order to produce the same size stitch that I normally get with regular fabric at 1.5 millimeters. If that's at all confusing, please make a stitch length sampler so that way you know what stitches look like on your machine. Okay, so the very first thing that I wanna do is I wanna just stitch a nice straight line. I wanna fill this entire sandwich fill with straight lines. So I'm gonna grab some one inch thick masking tape. This is, you know, super cheap stuff. You can find it anywhere. And I'm gonna set these lines up nice and straight across. So what this did, I pulled the tape tight. As I laid it down, it creates a nice straight line across my quilting space that I can follow with the needle following right against the edge of the tape. Now, what did I just do there? I went pretty quick, so let me slow down. I gotta remember, I'm, I'm going slow today, so that way I can share with you all of the tips and tricks for walking foot quilting. Basically, this is what I do every time I start a line of stitching. I drop the needle down into the machine. This is, I'm just rotating here with my hand wheel, okay? I rotated the needle all the way down. Now, I tug on that top thread, and then it brings up this loop. That loop is your bobbin thread, and you always want that to go on the top of the quilt. Just give it a tug and you'll get it all the way through. And then tuck those thread tails underneath the foot. I'm gonna cut mine off a little bit shorter. They were getting a little long. So what that does is it 
gets the bobbin thread up to the top where you can see the thread tails. It also ensures it's not gonna make a mess and get ugly on the back of your quilt. You can't see the back of your quilt, so you don't wanna leave uh, anything out there to be loosey-goosey and create issues. So now I'm just gonna stitch. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually stitching on top of the tape. The needle is not piercing the tape. Here's a picture of it straight on so you can really see a close up. The needle is not piercing the tape, but it is very close to that edge. And even if I did stitch through the tape, it wouldn't be the end of the world because you know it's just gonna pull off. I can just pull it out between the stitches. That's not at the end of the world. But I wanna stay right on the edge of the tape. It's gonna help me guide a nice, even spaced straight line all the way across my quilt. And this is honestly the quickest and fastest way to mark a straight line, to get one established, and begin that process of stitching straight lines uh, in any area of your quilt, whether it's across the entire length of the quilt, or it's just in one little section, maybe just in the blocks. And, and just in case you're feeling like this is too simple and too easy, please understand that straight lines can add such a dramatic texture to your quilts. It's a very simple design, yes, it's very easy, but it's also, I think, very beautiful. So don't roll your eyes, give it a try, definitely. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove the tape because that's my baseline. I'm going to stitch this on a half inch scale. What does that mean? Scale refers to the distance between your lines of quilting. So that if I stitched over two inches and stitched another line two inches apart, then I would say that's a two inch scale. That's the distance between your lines of quilting and that determines uh, how soft your quilt's going to be when it's finished. I wanna quilt this fairly densely. I really want you to see this beautiful texture from these straight lines. I also want you to see my evenly spaced stitches. That's another wonderful thing about walking foot quilting is that every stitch will be evenly spaced according to whatever you've set your stitch length on the machine. So these beautifully evenly spaced stitches are now also going to be evenly spaced in half inch lines. And what am I using to space out these lines? I'm just running the edge of that walking foot right against the edge of that line I just stitched. Careful stitching. All my hands are doing really is just guiding. I don't actually need to put my hands on the quilt at all. And if you find yourself, your stitch length kind of fluctuating, it might be that you're maybe pushing just a little bit too much. You can really take a light hand with this. See, I'm not even doing anything. And that's the, the power of the walking foot and the feed dogs on the machine guiding the quilt through the machine. All I have to do here is just a little bit subtle adjustment every once in a while, just to make sure that the walking foot doesn't start to veer in one direction or another. So you can take a really light hand with this. It's only whenever you get into really big bulky quilts that you really have to start manipulating things a lot. Now I've got a thread break here. I'm gonna tie this off and bury it real quick. You can find another video on how to tie off and bury thread tails securely in your quilt. Uh, I like to do this with every single thread break and anytime I get close to one, I just go on ahead and knock it out. And I do this with a cheater needle. It is a special self-threading needle, has a little groove on the end. And you can see that took all of what, 30 seconds, not even that. So it has a little groove on the end and allowed me to pop the thread tails in real quick, tie a knot, bury it in the middle of the quilt. It's super secure now, not going anywhere. So definitely check out that video so you can see how to bury your thread tails securely. Now I'm lazy, I'd have to rotate all the way around, kind of cram the block in the machine to get it around face this way. And I really don't like to do that. So instead, I'm gonna line my foot up here nice and straight, and I'm gonna hit the reverse button and slowly stitch in reverse, because I wanna work these lines from the center here to this outer edge. So I wanna continually work that way. So I just hit that reverse button did some travel stitching here, and now I can rotate much easier, be able to see my next line. Now I overshot a bit, so I'm gonna just pick up that needle with my hand wheel and drop it back down so that this edge of the foot now is lined up with this line of stitching. And now I'm just gonna continue that process, stitching that next straight line. Now you wanna be smoothing the quilt out with your hands, 
you know, gripping it a little bit, but really you're letting the machine do the work. And notice my pace, my speed here. I'm not racing to the finish. I am going slow and steady, and that's the key. A walking foot has to walk, so you really can't race it. I mean, I can put my foot down, but more than likely what's gonna happen as I really increase the speed is my stitch length might start to suffer because then I might not be getting quite the same amount of grip and then pull from my walking foot that I would be if I was going nice and slow and steady. So that's it for straight lines. I really hope you learned a lot in this video. Here's what it looked like whenever I finished quilting this design in my square. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about walking foot style quilting and you're ready to jump on your machine and give this a try. Now I'm stitching out my blocks pretty big so that way I can connect them together to create this beautiful quilt behind me. This is Marvelous Mosaic. So if you'd like to quilt along with me, all you need is a copy of my book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. And inside you will find 30 cool walking foot style quilt patterns. And you'll also find the quilt pattern for the Marvelous Mosaic Quilt. So please come and check this book out at leahday.com slash walking foot and quilt along with us. We're going to be quilting three projects from this book during the machine quilting party in 2018. So I hope that you'll join in the fun and learn a lot more about walking foot style quilting with me. If you like this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.